back to Arcane, the show actually goes for one-two punch with In Medias Res. After we move on from the Bridge of Origin and the credits roll, the story proper opens a couple years later. We are introduced to the immediate protagonist of the story, Violet, or Vi for short, as well as her little sister Powder. The pair live as troublemaking rapscallions in the murky underside of the city of Piltover and are currently on their way to pilfer some riches from the fancy topside. They are joined by Milo and Clagger, the rest of the adoptive set of siblings, guarded by Vander, the man from the beginning. Again, we are thrown in the middle of a big event with minimal background info. Everything we know comes from the scene itself, the environment, the physical happenings, and the little bits and pieces of dialogue. What if Vander finds out we're all the way up here? Look around you. You think anyone topside's going hungry? Besides, this is exactly the sort of job Vander would have pulled when he was our age. I'm going. Are you with me or not? Vander's gonna kill us. Yeah, only if we screw up. So don't screw up. Guidance, conversation, convincing, the way people would actually talk in this situation, it's natural and effective, informing the audience while not being ultra obvious. No one just declares, do do do, here we are, going to burglarize some rich folk, because we are poor, and we need the money, and we want to take it from the rich, because we hate them. The Stand By Me gang simply arrive at the apartment they plan to rob, and then break in. This is it. In Medias Res is nothing more complex than this. Beginning the story where the action starts, and then moving forward from there. We don't rewind time back, we don't get shown how and where the gang decided to execute this heist. We can gather all the meaningful info on scene, from context, and a bit of expo dialogue. Uh, guys? Wait, why? How the hell did we find this place? It was a tip from Little Man. Little Man? Just leave it. Come on. Importantly, this line doesn't come from nowhere. It comes as a reaction to the environment. Surprise? Worry? Did we bit off more than we could chew? Also, the name is dropped as the characters would say it. Who this little man is, is not explained to the audience on the spot because literally no one in this scenario would have the need to say it. We get that particular information later. One of the most important parts of creating and upholding the audience's immersion is to dispense information in a natural manner. Organic dialogue is the most direct path, have the characters chat, as one would in real life, and weave the info in, don't blurt information, Hide it amidst conversation. In addition, the environment tells a lot by itself. And I'm actually going to tackle this right here, so that I don't have to repeat it every time it comes up. This show, as a whole, looks fantastic. The animation is pristine, it has flair, it is clean and sharp when it needs to be, and it's playful when it needs to be. It has a clear vision. The show has a distinct look, both in terms of art style and designs. The directing is terrific. Every scene, every angle, every environment is thought out, full of tiny details that make this world breathe. Just look at this! That looks amazing! Every frame of this show is a painting, quite literally. Now, my mantra when it comes to visuals has and always will be this. Fantastic visuals cannot save a lacking story, nor can lacking visuals outright undo a fantastic story. However, fantastic production can accentuate an already functioning narrative. Like we already saw in the cold opening, the inner world of each of the characters is fully on show. No words are needed, we can see the story from the visuals. In the same way, the environment design tells a great part of the story, it creates mood, and it helps us understand where the characters are coming from, 
literally and figuratively. In this sense, great animation and visual design are the equivalent of great prose. Books need to communicate all of this in words. Visual mediums have the added benefit of just literally showing it. And Arcane does take full advantage of the medium of animation to communicate its story. That is praiseworthy. Back to the moment to moment happenings, we already know that the flow of the story and the dispensing of information is handled with care. But as far as I care, what is even more important than the events happening is the people they happen to. Characters are the soul of the story, you cannot have a story without characters. We the audience experience the events through their actions. As such, it is vital that the cast of imaginary people are in fact people we want to spend time with. And the best way to gain the favor of the audience is to make a proper first impression. And this is yet another thing Arcane handles excellently throughout. The foursome of teens are immediately defined, their persona, their bond, their contrast. You gonna get that door open anytime soon? Working on it. Seeing as I'm the only one who knows how to pick locks, I suggest... <laughs> Animals. Especially the contrast. Something as simple as the way the characters each react to the same scenario can reveal a lot. Couldn't we have at least just walked there? We gotta stay out of sight for this one. Called it. This is on you, Vi. I'll get it. No! Her. Powder, look at me! What did I tell you? That I'm ready. That's right. Oh, oh. <sighs> Thanks. Vi is the steadfast leader, determined, rash, yet supportive, specifically towards her little sister. She wants to include her in her life, even though she is markedly younger than the other kids. Powder herself is much meeker than her sister, obviously. She has years to catch up and mature. Meanwhile, she idolizes her sister, the way she can just boldly do things, and wishes to be just like her one day. Milo is the sarcastic one, taking any opportunity to reveal his attitude. Clacker's reaction is the most interesting one here. He actually offers to go fetch Powder. He comes off as a mellow, accommodating person. He wants to keep everyone happy, not really asserting himself, just trying to help wherever he can. And this characterization is actually reinforced right away. It's a subtle detail, but Clagger helps out Powder down from the roof and onto the balcony in the next scene. He seems like an earnest guy. The characters have defined personalities, a clear group dynamic, stemming from years spent growing together, no doubt. This is not their first rodeo. Their interactions feel natural, the way they just bounce from one another. One day, I'm gonna ride in one of those things. And one day, I'm gonna shoot one of them down. This feels like a bunch of kids hanging out together. The characters come off as real, and their exchanges are rather entertaining. Not try-hardy, nothing is forced, it's just simple, humble dialogue and logical events. Something happens, and people respond in the way that is proper to their characterization. And none of this is deep, or complex, or special. The bigger, grander, more defining character moments come later on, naturally. But the opening moments with this cast already gives the audience something to latch on to. The introduction sells the story to come. I'm intrigued. I want to see more of these kids and find out what exactly will unfold from this reckless criminal adventure. And to underline something here, although I'm sure I'll end up stating this several times, none of this, nothing I'm commenting on or praising this show for, is unique. None of this is ultra amazing, never done before redefining storytelling as we know it. I'm not trying to oversell this show. The value of Arcane is not breaking the mold, or subverting, or one-upping the stories that have come before. The value of this show is its adherence to time-tested storytelling values, 
and a solid execution of its ideas, it knows what it's trying to do and handles it admirably. I dream of a world where Arcane would be a solid 5 out of 10 instead of one of the top products the entertainment industry graces us with. This show is filled with great moments, yet in the grand scheme of things, it is not extraordinary, but it is exemplary. Just simple clean storycraft, things that should be the norm. It is a well-crafted story, and we are currently building the foundation. It's just that this level of competence should be the bare minimum to achieve. That's why we are here, examining this show with such detail. Because even this basic level of quality is in fact becoming harder and harder to find. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.